everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is a webinar for low power broadcasters on the emergency alert system and the EAS test reporting system. I am Maureen Bijko, an attorney in the FCC's Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau. Also presenting today is Elizabeth Kuttner, an attorney in the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau. I'll begin the presentation and she'll present some slides later. Before we begin, I'd like to note, we've disabled the function that would allow those on the conference line to participate. We will take questions during and after the presentation by way of email. You see the email on the screen. Please send any questions to alerting at FCC.gov. If we have time, we'll answer the questions at the end. If not, we'll send a reply by email. We begin by setting forth the goal for our webinar. The goal is to increase low power broadcaster participation in the nationwide EAS test taking place August 7th, 2019, and to improve compliance with filing required information about low power broadcaster participation in the ETRF. Low power broadcasters participated in low rates in the 2018 nationwide EAS test. In that test, participants participation rates were 48.4% for low-power FM broadcasters and 41.5% for low-power TV broadcasters, compared to 78.5% for all radio broadcasters and 65% for all television broadcasters. Another goal of this webinar is to educate low-power broadcasters on the EAS. We're aware that those listening to this webinar have varying levels of knowledge of the EAS and broadcasters' part in it. We have attempted to cater to as many levels of understanding as feasible in this time period. The Emergency Alert System. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with EAS, we define it here. It's a national public warning system commonly used by state and local authorities to deliver important emergency information like weather and amber alerts. EAS participants include radio and TV broadcasters, cable systems, satellite radio and television providers, and wireline video providers. They deliver local alerts on a voluntary basis, but they're required to provide the capability for the president to alert the public during a national emergency, and that's the rule site, 47 CFR 11.11. .11. So the EAS rules are at 47 CFR section 11.1 .1 and, and after. Uh, you can access this at e, www.ecfr.gov if you'd like to look through it. The rules that form the framework are in CFR part 11. And the relevant takeaway from the rules for purposes of this webinar is that EAS participants must deliver presidential alerts and nationwide monthly and weekly tests. Delivery of other alerts, like weather, state, and amber, is voluntary. In other words, there's a distinction between state and federal alerts. It's also very important to note that EAS alerts must be accessible to people with disabilities. That means that the visual message portion of an EAS alert, whether it's a video crawl or a block text, must be displayed at the top of the television screen or where it won't interfere with other visual messages in a manner that's readily readable and understandable that doesn't contain overlapping lines of EAS text or extend beyond the viewable display. It must play in full at least once during any EAS message. The FCC, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the National Weather Service implement the EAS at the federal level. The EAS infrastructure is also regularly used to distribute weather-related and other emergency alerts. Broadcasters need to know that closed captioning does not cover the EAS. Make sure that closed captioning does not cover the EAS text. Make sure that the EAS audio is not being drowned out by the programming audio. Test your equipment before the test day 
to make sure you'll be able to display the audio and visual component of the EAS message in accordance with the Commission's accessibility requirements. EAS distribution. There are two ways for a national alert to be delivered to people watching TV or listening to the radio, either over the Internet from FEMA's, from FEMA's Integrated Public Alert and Warning System Gateway or by over-the-air broadcast. EAS participants are required to monitor both systems for redundancy. This is the daisy chain diagram. Here, an alert originator formats an alert using the EAS protocol and initiates its transmission at a designated entry point in the system. Under the EAS protocol, an EAS alert uses a four-part message, the preamble and EAS header code, the audio attention signal, audio message, and preamble and end of message code. For the nationwide test, FEMA initiates the alert. Following the diagram here, it's sent by signal over the air to local and state level officials who in turn send it to broadcasters. The primary purpose of the EAS is to provide the President of the U.S. with the capability to provide immediate communications and information to the general public at the national, state, and local area level during periods of national emergency. ETRS Form 1 asks EAS participants to identify their EAS designation. You see the EAS designations in the diagram, PEP, LP1, etc. We have found that many filers are not well informed of their status. For example, 539 stations identified as primary entry point stations in the last test. However, according to FEMA, there are only 77 primary entry point stations nationwide. The most common designations and their definitions are PEP, which cooperatively participates with FEMA to provide EAS alerts to the public. A national primary, NP, is an entity tasked with the primary responsibility of receiving the presidential alert from a PEP. State primary, which is tasked with initiating the delivery of EAS alerts other than the presidential alert. A local primary, which is an entity that serves as a monitoring assignment for other EAS participants within the state. A participating national is an EAS participant that transmits national, state, or local area EAS messages and is not otherwise designated within the state EAS plan. This is the EAS alert distribution over IPOS. IPAWS is a national alerting system administered by FEMA. Under this system, EAS participants monitor a FEMA-administered website for EAS messages that are written in the Common Alerting Protocol. IPAWS relies on the central, centralized distribution of alerts using an alert aggregator and an internet-based internet interface. An EAS test initiated and delivered through IPAWS has the technical capability to deliver a test that includes the test nature of the event in both the text crawl and audio portion of the alert message. The 2019 nationwide test is scheduled for Wednesday, August 7th at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time. If conditions on the day of the test require rescheduling, a secondary test date is scheduled for Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. Unlike in recent years, the 2019 nationwide test will be disseminated using the broadcast-based distribution system only, not iPods. And I have a link to the public notice announcing the 2019 test, which provides valuable information. Our low-power broadcasters, EAS participants,